Excellent. So a very warm welcome to you all to our second ever Zoom service. Um, if you the the pew sheet, the pew sheet has in fact um, got the is in fact attached to the website if you want to print it off at any point. But if you've um, actually seen that or you're looking at the screen in front of you, you will see the theme of our service is come and see which is a verse from our Bible reading, which Emma's going to read uh, later on. So this is the story of Jesus calling Philip or finding him and then him going to invite Nathaniel to meet Jesus. So come and see is our theme. Um, we will be recording the service and we hope to be putting it on the website round about lunchtime or early afternoon. If I could ask everybody to actually mute themselves unless except when you're actually reading or doing the prayers then you'll find the sound is much better so we'll just wait while everybody actually mutes themselves unless you're actually speaking or it's your turn to speak when it comes to the hymns the words of the hymns will be on the screen and carol will be playing colin and carol will together sing so the idea is that you can sing along at home but please keep your machine on mute, otherwise the sound gets all peculiar. We've still got a few rustles, so I expect one or two people might not quite yet be on mute. So if you could do that, that would be great. Anyway, we're going to begin our service this morning with our first hymn, which is Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. Thank you. 
time now to say sorry to God. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let's just be quiet for a moment and think what we need to say sorry to God for. And let's join in that prayer together, making sure you're mute and then we'll say the words together, saying, Heavenly Father, Father have, have mercy, mercy upon us. Forgive us where we have gone wrong and sinned and help us to walk from now on in your way. Amen. May our Father God, the God of love and power, bring you back to himself, forgive you through the death of his son Jesus, free you from your sins and restore you to newness of life by his spirit. Amen. And we're going to join now in the prayer of the day. We've got a pew sheet, it's on there, but it's also on the screen. And we're going to, it's a prayer about, um, um, about really Philip and that based on our Bible reading. So we say together, Almighty God, God teach, teach us to know your son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, as the way, the truth and, and the life. And show us how to deepen our relationship with him day by day. Help us to follow in the footsteps of your servant, Philip and invite others to follow Jesus too. Amen. Uh, we're going to sing again now. We're going to sing There is a Redeemer. After this hymn, the children will be going into their breakout groups. So Liz, after the hymn, will explain what they need to do uh, to do that. So we're going to sing again now. We're having the reading before we sing. Oh, I beg your pardon. We are having the reading before we sing. Thank you very much. Sorry. <laughs> Emma is going to do the reading, then we'll sing, and then we'll have the... Thank you. Yes, so Emma, off you go with the reading. Thank you. Um, today's lesson is from John 1, verses 43 to 51. Um, one second. I can't read that back. Fine. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Jesus calls Philip and Nathaniel. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethesda. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the son of man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much, Emma. And now we're going to sing There is a Redeemer.
Thank you, uh, Liz. So I am just going to set up a breakout room for the children. Um, and so if you get a tick on the th if you get a notice, um, then if you can tick it, if you want to come to Sunday school, if you don't, you're very welcome to stay in with the adults. Um, yeah, and then we'll be back in about 15 minutes. So I think this should be everyone. If not, then just send me a message and I'll add you on to it. But I think I've got all the children now. Right, so I think we've now lost Liz and the children. I think that's why it's what we're... I'm going to now hand over to Peter. He's going to tell us briefly about his experience of the reality of that verse, what it means, come and see. So just a brief uh, personal experience about design says, come and see. Um, when I was 16, I met up with a friend called Rick. We've been at school together from the age of 7 to 12. And um, I was uh, asking him about how things were going. And he said, oh, they're, they're going very well. I've just left school. I started acting, joined an acting agency, uh, got a couple of job offers already. And uh, that's going well. I've also uh, just started a, a, a band, a group. And that's going very well. It, Except we've we just lost our lead singer. So, uh, and I'm ashamed to say, as I look back on it, I lied through my teeth and said to Rick, "Oh well, I've done some lead singing." So Rick said, "Oh, we'll come for an audition tomorrow, and we'll see how we go." So uh, it went well, and for the next four years, I was in the same band as Rick. Um, halfway through, they uh, three three of them changed um, uh, clientele. And in those four years, we had two drummers who both of them, uh, for different reasons, eventually became very famous. But that is a story for another day. Um, when I was 20, I went to university and Rick was in London. I was in Oxford and I didn't really keep in touch with Rick very much. During those three years, um, I had two friends in particular who um, pestered me about Christianity in the nicest way. And looking back, it was very much um, um, an invitation from them to come and see. And eventually their pestering uh, worked wonders and I became a Christian. And then after three years, went back to London to finish my law studies. And as soon as I got there, I, I fixed up to have dinner with Rick on a Friday night. And as the evening was approaching the end, I thought, I've, I've got to tell Rick I've become a Christian. I can't... Um, uh, not tell him. So we're driving back and uh, he, he's, he's doing the driving and we um, get outside where I was staying. And I said, Rick, I, I really want to tell you, I've, I've become a Christian. It, it's made all, the, made all the difference to me. And um, uh, why don't you investigate? Why don't you have a think about Christianity? Um, as we were sort of parked there, we, we did joke about this afterwards. Rick sort of wound the window down at this point as if to say, boy, the atmosphere is getting really heavy in here. We need a bit of fresh air. Um, anyway, it took about a week and um, Rick himself became a Christian. I read the Bible with him once a week for nine months. And at the end of those nine months, Rick's brother, Chris, became uh, well, came to him and said, we've noticed a change in your life, my partner and I. Um, can you tell us about it? We, we're interested ourselves. So um, they became Christians and uh, um, uh, again, very much on the lines of uh, wanting to, to see, come and see how it had changed Rick and, and they wanted the same thing for themselves. 
And since that time, uh, I've actually lost count of the number of Christians in, in Rick's family, the people who've become Christians, really as a result of this kind of come and see friendship, come and see um, evangelism, if you want to use that particular word. But just, um, just in a very friendly way, saying to people, well, Jesus has made all the difference to me. Why don't you investigate? Why don't you have a look for yourselves? Why don't you come and see? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Andrew, would you like, like to, I think, I think we've got Sarah with us, who's probably got Chloe with, or Sarah or Craig. Could you just do a little message to Liz and tell her that probably Chloe is with us and she might like to break, invite her into the uh, breakout group. Sarah, we can't actually see anybody, but maybe that's on purpose, but welcome anyway. Just before I speak a bit about the passage, I'm just going to ask Peter to tell us the name of these two famous drummers, because you'll all, otherwise you won't be concentrating on the sermon. Could you just tell them who they are? Then <laughs> we, we couldn't we couldn't actually hear that sadly <laughs> i wasn't aware she was going to ask me to speak again so uh, um the the first drummer was peter gabriel um we were a local band so um we played together in the school holidays um as some some of you will know in term time peter had another group which uh it was Genesis, and uh, that, that was the group that took off and really got famous. And uh, after two years, he, Peter came to us and said, oh, well, I, we've just been offered a contract, recording contract with somebody called Jonathan King, and uh, off they went, and the rest is history. So we had to replace Peter Gabriel, and the second drummer we had, and that's why I said they're famous for very different reasons. In fact, I'm rather hoping you've never heard of this chap. But the second drummer was a man called Robin Asquith, who Anne and I met up with a couple of years ago. Robin Asquith um, was the leading actor in the 70s, uh, and he made 15 films, all of them the Confessions films, Confessions of a Taxi Driver, Confessions of a Window Cleaner. <laughs> well, you asked me to speak. <laughs> Right, now we're going to look at the Bible passage, if you've got your cruise ship there. Oh, it's, uh, it, actually, we haven't got it on the screen, have we? That's the, that's the disadvantage of doing it this way. But uh, you had it read to you, and if you've got a pew sheet, you can see it. And probably next time I need to get this, we need to get the passage on the screen for the sermon, I think. I hadn't, we, we are still learning with the, with the technology here. But I hope you've remembered the story that Emma read. Let's just pray before we look at the passage. Well, Jesus, we pray that now that you will help each of us come and see and inspire us, we pray, to share our experience of you with others. Amen. Amen. So chapter one of St. John's Gospel begins with the creation of the universe and the first days of our world. Chapter one ends with the first days of the church. The church began with Jesus calling two people. Come and see, Jesus says to them. And so they do. And one of them, Andrew, told his brother Peter, we have found the Christ, the Messiah. That was the first day of the church. On the second day of the church, the pattern repeats itself. Jesus calls Philip, just as Emma read to us just now. Philip, in turn, says to Nathaniel, come and see. We have found the person we've been looking for throughout our history. And so on and so on until today, when there are nearly three billion Christians in the world, people of all ages, races and countries. But it began so very simply, not with a conference or a committee, but simply with one person finding another and saying, come and see just as in the experience Peter told you of Rick and his family. And that is the most fruitful way of growing the church. Now, every sing single one of you knows now about the R number, the way we rate an infection like COVID's ability to infect. We know that if the R rate goes over one, the disease spreads exponentially. I just think for a moment about the maths of spreading not a disease, but the good news about a saviour and eternal life. 
if every Christian in Preston, or should I say South Ribble, did what these followers of Jesus did in the first two days of the church and said to just one other person, come and see, I'm told the entire population of Preston would be in church within one week. Certainly bears thinking about. If only we could match those first two days, one person finds Jesus and in turn he introduces a friend to Jesus and so on and so on. This morning we're focusing on the second day of the Christian church when Jesus finds Philip and says, follow me. In turn, Philip finds Nathaniel and says to him, come and see. The pattern is exactly the same as the previous day. But notice on both days, it begins with Jesus finding someone. And that is really important. Christians sometimes talk of how they found Jesus or found faith. They usually come to realize it is, in fact, the other way around. It is Jesus who has found them. And it's when they look back at all the things, the people, the events in their own lives, in their own lives, all those that led to their Christian commitment, that they see that all their lives Jesus had been searching for them, even when they may have shown no interest at all in him. It's there in that beautiful Footprints poem, which I expect most of you know. Or indeed, it's there in the experience of C.S. Lewis, the author of the Narnia books, who in his autobiography, when he's talking of his journey from atheism to faith, describes himself as the most reluctant convert in Christendom, as he experienced what he calls the steady, unrelenting approach of God himself. So first and foremost, Jesus is seeking us. Jesus first says, come and see to Andrew and his friend on the first day. On the second day here, Philip says it to Nathaniel. And it is a great phrase. Jesus says to each one of us, come and see. And when we have seen, when we have met Jesus, then we are to say it to our friends. Now, everybody has different starting points in faith. People have different reasons for wanting to explore faith. For some, it might simply be curiosity. Perhaps a friend has become a Christian or they've seen lives changed, as in the story of Rick's family. So simply curiosity makes them want to think, well, what's it all about? Now, very often I go into shops and I'm just wanting to have a look. And when you start just going to have a look or browsing the shop, some, a shop assistant usually says to you, can I help you, madam? And I say, well, I'm just looking. Now, actually, many people start their journey to faith by simply just looking, just thinking, actually, this is perhaps something or maybe someone who they would like to know more about. And the amazing thing is, that Jesus in his love and graciousness accepts that, just the simple curiosity, and he says, come and see. So to go back to the passage, the first crucial question is, can you say like Philip, I have found the one I have been looking for all my life? If you have, then it shouldn't be too hard to say to your friend or neighbor or spouse, come and see. You don't have to know the answers to all your friends' questions. None of us has all the answers in this world. What you need to do is to keep one hand in the hand of Jesus and to stretch out the other to your friend or relative and say, come and see, come with me and find out. A wise bishop wrote in his Bible beside this passage, the greatest service you can do for someone else is to bring someone to Jesus. It is the only thing you can do for another which will last forever and ever. Have you tried it? The second crucial question. And so we see there are these two aspects to the Christian life, our own personal inward relationship to Jesus, 
one hand in his, as it were, and then our reaching out with the other hand to our friends and our neighbours. Two aspects, following him and finding others. And our hands really do need to stretch both ways. A healthy faith cannot be entirely inward-looking. Faith is not just a private affair. It needs to look outwards to share. Come and see, says Jesus and Philip. So let's finish by focusing on Jesus. In this passage, Jesus has been said that Jesus has four kinds of sight. Natural sight, insight, foresight and oversight. With his physical sight, Jesus saw Nathaniel. He has insight. He knows what sort of person he is. He has foresight. He tells Nathaniel that one day he will see heaven open just and see Jesus as he is. And he has oversight. Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior. He is the king. He is our king. And so he commands Philip follow me. And so the one who made us, loves and redeems us. And says, follow me, come and see. I'm just going to finish with the words of a chorus that some of you perhaps will learn when you were in Sunday school. It's a beautiful chorus, but it focuses our thoughts and minds upon Jesus. And indeed, if you remember part of the story, uh, Nathaniel sat under the fig tree. It's where people meditated in those days. It's a lovely way to think about us spending time simply being with Jesus. So I'm going to finish with these four words of this prayer chorus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will look strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Amen. And so I'm going to hand over now to Jane, who's going to lead us in our intercessions. At the end of each group of prayers this morning, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and you're invited to join in the response, hear our prayer. Let us pray together as a church family for the needs of the world, the church and our community. Lord, it is not easy for us to keep in touch with each other currently within our congregation and community, but we give thanks for the technology that enables us to do so while our opportunities to meet in person are so limited. Help us, despite these difficulties, to recognise our neighbours and friends who are struggling and need help, and to listen to those who may be turning to us because they know we are members of this church. Help us to support them as best we can and to encourage them to come and see for themselves how your word is shared and put into action here at St Michael's. We also ask that you help us, Lord, to remember to pray for ourselves, to give ourselves time to reflect and to learn, and enable us to reflect your will for us in whatever we do in our daily lives. We pray that others will see the way we live our lives and be inspired to find out why we have chosen this path. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, at this time of severe pandemic, we give thanks for the safe recovery from COVID of those known to us in our community. We also continue to pray for everyone who is currently suffering from this terrible virus, especially those, not, especially those struggling in hospital and their families. And we remember all who have not been able to make a recovery and the families that they have left behind. Lord, we pray too for the medical and nursing staff, paramedics, frontline hospital staff, and all who treat and support people needing their urgent care. We know they are under unprecedented pressure, often suffering physical and mental exhaustion through their work. And we earnestly pray that you, you will give them the strength they need to continue to care for others and themselves. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. At this time of pressure and change in our world, we pray for world leaders. We pray for our own government as they continue to grapple with so many different issues and for all those leading the rollout of the vaccination programme upon which our future health and economic prosperity depends. We pray for the people of America 
and in particular for President Biden and Vice President Harris, as they work to inspire hope, heal divisions and reconnect their country. Elsewhere, we pray for all who work to address the significant issues faced in our world, climate change, pollution, civil wars and the refugee crisis. And in Birmingham, we remember in particular the family of 15-year-old Keon Lincoln, killed in a knife attack this week. We give thanks that 12 minors have now been rescued in China and pray that they may be restored to health and to their families. We also remember those who remain trapped underground and for those trying to rescue them. And closer to home, we pray for all who suffered in the floods this week giving thanks that our local area has been spared serious damage this time. Lord, in your mercy, prayer. we pray for all who are sick in body or mind. From our own church community, we pray in particular for Beryl Carr, Beryl Cotton, Eva Coxhead, Michael Pulvermacher, baby Erica Ivy and her parents. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Finally, this morning, we remember all those who have died in faith, whom we have lost, especially in the last year. And in a moment of quiet, let us each think of those known to us who need our prayers at this time. Bring them comfort, Lord, we pray, and peace in their hearts. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We continue in prayer now by joining together in the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We turn now to our final hymn, In Christ Alone.
us pray. So now may the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you to serve him. And may the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and overflow to your friends and neighbours. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And so before our social breakout groups, just a few notices. First of all, thank you very much indeed for all of you who've taken, you've all taken part in the Zoe. So thank you all very much for coming. Thank you for those playing the music, Colin and Carol, uh, for, the, uh, for Jane doing the intercessions, for Emma doing the prayers and everybody else. Hmm? I've been doing the reading, sorry, <laughs> and everybody else. So thank you very much. Um, Lovely to have all the children joining us. And, and I think the PCC all felt unanimously that, uh, that this system we have at the moment of a, uh, a short um, Holy Communion service live in church at nine, and then this sort of uh, all age family Zoom with Sunday school in the middle. So, so not all age, a service for the whole family is working well. So until the government tells us something different, or the situation changes, I think we'll carry on doing this. So please do come again next week and do actually tell other people to give it a try. As I said, the recording of the service we hope will be on the website uh, shortly as well. Um, just to say there are prayer sheets in church again, the church is open every day. And it would be lovely to see some of you at the Zoom Bible study growth group tomorrow. Even if you've never been on one, do come along and join us. We've had some really, in fact, this whole Zoom thing came out of one of those discussions. Um, if you look at the website and the pew sheet, you'll see a bit more about that. We're looking at the uh, commandment number three about not taking God's name in vain, which is really about how we should take God seriously. So hope to see many of you tomorrow night on Zoom again at 7.30. Um, so now I'm going to say thank you all for coming. We're looking for, for coming. Do stay if you can to the breakout groups. They were lots of fun last time, just having a chance to speak a bit longer. And you, you obviously just go home from your breakout groups when you've said all you want to say. say Liz, I'm going to hand over to Liz, who's just going to tell us how it works and what we need to do. Um, yes, yeah, so you should get an invitation to join a breakout group um, in the next um, 